Hi, I'm Trevor Lund from RevTrev.com, and in this week's newsletter, again, I'm going to be combining this newsletter with RevTrev TV. So, I hope that you enjoyed the uh, last newsletter, and I had a lot of fun doing it. It was a little long, so it took quite a while for me to, to uh, actually convert and upload. But you know what? I I really do think that it's way more fun for me to be doing this. And, you know, I had a lot of great comments back and uh, questions back, and I thought, you know, it is a much better way for me to connect with people. Like, I do enjoy writing, and, you know, I am a writer, and I, you know, it's part of... The production that I do is uh, to write things down and to get things connected and so I tend to want to blog things and blog answers but you know um, a lot of times it's video that connects us a whole lot quicker and if I can make it short <laughs> it, it, uh, it can be more helpful so first off I do want to invite you to ask your questions because I am going to be doing up a regular RevTrev TV RevTrev radio kind of thing Basically, what I do is I record it, the the uh, audio, and the video. Strip off the audio, make it a podcast. I'm not. I'm just going to actually have them both on the same page feed, uh, iTunes the same way, and uh, get it on YouTube for the video anyway. And so all of that, um, I'm simplifying my process and hopefully in making it uh, bringing more value to you in that. Uh, so the question that kept on coming up after the last podcast, or last podcast, the last newsletter, was people were asking me, well, you know, can you explain more about how you can actually hear God? And, um, you know, that's the, that's a lifelong topic. It really is a lifelong topic to exploring God and experiencing God. And yeah, of course, I will share what I've learned in my journey and, uh, you know, give you some tips, give you some, I've got some books sitting here that I can recommend for you. And um, also just, I, I want you to know that when you're his sheep, by you're his sheep means that you have made Jesus your Lord, you've asked him into your life, you've, you've said, Jesus, you're in the driver's seat, I'm no longer driving, if I'm following you, What when my life doesn't line up with your word, I change my life to line up with your word. You are in control of my life. When that happens, you are his sheep, you hear his voice. When you obey him, Jesus said to his disciples, "When you since you obeyed me, I no longer call you servants, I call you friends. And friends, my father tells my friends what he's going to do. And so God is always talking. God is always talking. Now, I used to think that, you know, there's a cute little saying that when the test is on, the teacher is silent. And sometimes when we're going through those hard times, it does seem like God is silent. And it's a great bumper sticker. It's absolutely terrible theology. <laughs> absolutely terrible theology. Like there are some times when God speaks and we don't obey. He's not going to speak again. You want the example for that? That's Jonah. You know, Jonah, God told Jonah to go to Nineveh. He said, well, no, I mean, what if I go there and they repent? I don't want them to repent. They're evil. <laughs> Honestly, you want to know what they did? Like they, their form of punishment was to stick a pole and have people uh, impale themselves. Uh, stick them up the rectum and have them slide down the pole. And when the pole got to the heart, they would die. It was extremely slow and extremely painful. Um, and that was the evil of the Assyrians. And uh yeah you don't want people those kind of you want the wrath of god on them right totally understandable for jonah jonah went the other way of course got swallowed by the whale didn't hear god again until he was ready to obey right a lot of times that happens to us is that we god has told us to do something and we decide to go hold a prayer meeting and ask god to do it <laughs> Then it's like, I haven't heard God speak for such a long time. Well, and when that happens, you just go back to him and you say, okay, God, is there anything in my life that's that's keeping you 
from from me hearing you lord if i've offended if i've if i have not done what you've told me to do please bring it to my mind god is not a mean ogre that's up there to jump on you the second you step out of line he doesn't punish you because you're an idiot he punishes you because you deserve it uh, and to train you in all righteousness to bring you into the the more the, that more and more image of jesus christ and so yeah he does discipline you as children you're not illegitimate children but uh, don't worry. When you go and ask him, he wants you to know why you can't hear him speak. Now, uh, I'm getting ahead of myself. First off, the first points I want to make is um, you are his sheep. You hear his voice. You you do hear it. You need to learn how he's speaking and learn how to uh, actually hear him. And that's um, the trick into this. And as I said before, it's a lifelong journey. Uh, God speaks to us differently in different times of our life. Sometimes it's different seasons. Sometimes it's different maturity. I think a perfect illustration of this is like when you're a parent, excuse me, when you're a parent, I don't know if I'll edit that out, <laughs> and your kids are really little and they're just toddlers and they just, you know, before they can talk and they just like to squeal and run around. When you, you, know, when you hide Easter eggs for them, uh, you put it somewhere really obvious where they're going to see it. When you get older, it's not fun if they just hide the Easter egg in the middle of the room. <laughs> As they grow up, like my son wanted things hidden even this year. And, and so we had to make it tough and, you know, no hints. And it might have been inside the house, upside, uh, outside the house, on top of the house. You know, he had to search everywhere. And uh, what's the proverb? It is the uh, glory of God to conceal a matter, but it's the glory of kings to seek it out. I'm sorry, I should have had that written down. Uh, you can look that up. I'll probably flash it underneath here when I'm done. Um, the, the Where that's from. And actually, I could probably put the correct verse for that. Uh, so, how do you hear God? Well, as I talked about before, you hear God in different ways. You, you can hear God in coincidences. Now, okay. Let me just back up here. When you when I say hear God, I'm talking about impressions of God. There is that time when you can hear an audible voice of God. And quite frankly, uh, when that happens, <laughs> when it happens, you know it's God. And, and, and there is nothing you can do but fall on your face and cry holy, like there, if you can speak at all, like it's, it's, it's life changing. Um, so when we talk about hearing God, I, I, I don't expect that that happens every day. I don't expect that that, that happens in most lifetimes. Uh, you know, it's something that happens when I say it, like it happened to me because I was too dull to pick up on any other thing, you know, like <laughs> you finally said, stop. Now's the time of decision. Now's the time you need to make that choice. I'm, I'm breaking into, into time and space and making you feel so in, insignificant and yet so highly valued. And um, so, yeah, God does speak. Uh, audibly, but when I talk about hearing God, it's it's that impression, being led by the impression of the Holy Spirit, being led by you know, and and for some of us, like we are led by our emotions, and it's easy for us to hear God. Others of us, we're we're wired a different way, and so when we hear hear God, we think always we're we're, we're thinking audible voice, and why can't I hear that audible voice? Well, it's very rarely an audible voice. Often, it's things like coincidences. You know, if someone, if I hear the same thing three times in a very short order, uh, I generally think I, 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 I'm, I've learned to, to check to see if that's a God thing. You know, it could just be, you know, it's on the Twitter feed and everyone's tweeting it, but uh, that's not what I'm talking about. It's usually when, you know, I, I hear something, I see something, I read something, and uh, it all kind of comes together and say, okay, so God is doing something there. There's something significant there. You can, uh, he speaks through coincidences. He speaks through people. How many times have you heard a sermon? And I'll tell you this, as a pastor, 
the times that people come up to me and say, that's such a tremendous sermon. And then they, they start to uh, tell me a sermon that I didn't preach. Um, I just laugh because it's the Holy Spirit telling them something. <laughs> it's totally off topic. And a number of times when that has happened, it's, I know where I stop when I, you know, like I'm, I go into a verse, uh, into a chapter, and I stop at a certain point, and then I teach on that that part of Scripture. And uh, this one time I know specifically, this guy came down, and he was just like, when you said this, and you said that, and you said this, that just, you know, it just changed my life, and all these things are going on. It's like, dude, you kept on reading your Bible, didn't you? <laughs> because if you kept on reading where I stopped, that was the sermon that that picked up, and that's what that's what the Holy Spirit was speaking to him, and so um, so God can God always it's the Word of God that He speaks through, um, and uh, the Word is the canon. The canon means rule, uh, as in um, the standard. Like uh, everything we hear from God, hear from God we have to take to the lens of scripture. We need to say, okay, what, you know, is this, does this line up with what the Bible says? Does this tell us about the, uh, what God's nature is? Does it line up with his character? Is it something he said before? Like we, we want the Bible to be our guide and, and uh, really help us discern what we are, if we, the, the sense that we're getting, is it really God? It has to line up with scripture. Um, okay, let me, uh, this is a rabbit trail, but I need to do this. Okay, so scripture, there's three things, three things that I teach, uh, gifts and, uh, community. Okay. So you're, you think you're hearing from God. You think God is, He's bringing stuff to your mind. You might, it might be through a dream. It might be through a vision. It might be through what people have said to you. It might be through what you've read and something came alive. You read a book about missionaries in Uganda and you're like, Ooh, I gotta do that. Um, you know, you, you've, you've, uh, uh, you know, there's, there's different things that, that are happen. And, and so you, you want to discern if you're really hearing from God because, Again, hearing from God. Uh, you, if you're sensing correctly what God is, seems to be impressing upon you. I hate language <laughs> because language is 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 so imperfect, and what I say can be heard by you differently. So if I say hear from God, please understand, it's not the audible voice, right? I've already gone down this rabbit trail. So um, you want to test to see if you're hearing from God. Well. Basically, there's three things that you should look for. One, does it line up with scripture? Is it in agreement with God's will? Do you want to know what God's will is for your life? I just, I heard this the other day and I thought, this is great. Uh, my wife was listening to a podcast by either Stuart or Jill Briscoe. And uh, we really appreciate this couple. They, they, we actually met them when they were 20 years ago when... Uh, I was in seminary and uh, they came up to do a conference and we were able to sit with them for a while and talk and man, they are awesome people. Anyway, um, Stuart Briscoe, I think it was, was was kind of on a rant about people, sick and tired of people coming to him saying, what is God's will for my life? And what he said was, go do a study in the Bible for everything that says God's will is. Now you can go to Bible Gateway right now and do a search for God's will is, put it in quotes so that it gets the whole phrase. Um, God is willing or God is not willing. You can search all of these things, get a whole, do a study on this. What is God's will? Guess what? That is God's will for your life. What, <laughs> what is good and what does the Lord require of you? It, to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Like that is God's will. But oh, but should I be a doctor? Can you love mercy? Can you walk humbly? Can you... <laughs> What does it matter? Yeah, if you got the skill. Okay, we'll get, we'll get on to that. So you, you, it doesn't line up with scripture. Number one, doesn't line up with, this is how do you, do, how do you discern if this is what God, if, if it's really God's will? One, does it line up with scripture? Two, uh, do you have the gifts and abilities to do what you think God is telling you to do? Okay, let me explain this a bit. The gifts and abilities, there are things that, uh, uh, things things that you can learn things that you have learned and um, they are all subject to character. 
Okay, so so when we talk about when I talk about you know finding out what God's will is, what you're doing is actually you're building your character, right? God's will is that you have a strong character. Because that strong character is going to see you through whatever you do. You've got to be integrous. You've got to say what you mean and mean what you say. You've got to, all these bumper sticker things that we say. You've got to be that person that people that the people say, okay, well, you know, like they're trustworthy. They're they're somebody that they've got some gravitas. They've got some weight. They've got something there that I, I you know, I, I appreciate and. Uh, when you're young, people can say, you know, look at you and say, you know, just, I, I, I like that vim and that vigor. You know, when you get older, it's like, ooh, that, there's something there that is really attractive. It draws me to them. That's character, and that is absolutely essential for doing God's will because that is God's will for you. So anyway, these gifts and these the, the gifts that support it. A uh, simple illustration of this is uh, I feel God is calling me to be a uh, uh, pop singer, okay? Uh, well, the biggest question is, do you have a voice for it? <laughs> <laughs> you know, the people I work with, often, it's, it's uh, you know, I, I feel God is calling me to write this book. Great, okay. Um, have you ever written anything? <laughs> And I'm, I don't mean to laugh because, yeah, God tells you to do that. But if you don't have the skills, you get off your butt and you get the skills you need to do that. Sometimes it's God might have told you to write this book. But if you've never written a book, you don't have the skills to write that book. Maybe God's not telling you now, today, to write that book. He's giving you direction for the future so that you can actually get the skills you need to write that book. Or write those books that you that he has you to write. So you, you need... God isn't calling you if it doesn't line up with scripture. God isn't calling you if you don't have the gifts or can't get the gifts, can't get the skills to do what he's calling you to do. Thirdly, um, what do people around you say? Like God's put us together in community for a reason. And one of the biggest dangers that many of us have of not being in a, in a church family, like, listen, I get it. I understand that there's, there's so much that happens in church that isn't what happens in the Bible. There's so much that happens because of church tradition, church structure, the fact that it's it's a it's a, a legal community, the fact that it's a um, uh, it's a group of people that need to somehow work together. And uh, you know, I I don't believe that <laughs> sitting uh, staring at the back of someone's head, listening to some expert on the stage talk about things that I know more than they know about is what Jesus described can't overtake the gates of hell. You know? <laughs> I'm sorry, that was a little clumsy and a little facetious. But anyway, I, I get it. But the fact of the matter is we need each other. We need to be in that community and however that looks. You need to have the people that know you well enough to say, listen, you, you shouldn't try to be a singer. <laughs> You, know, you shouldn't try to be a singer. If you watch American Idol, you know those ones that don't have those people around them to say, listen, uh, you might not want to go on national TV to try out for this con con uh, the singing contest. You know, it's it's dangerous when the ones who, you know, their friends are the ones telling them, yeah, go, yeah, go. No, no, it's not going to be embarrassing when they know very well that it's going to be completely embarrassing. Um, so... How do you discern if what you're hearing is from God? Does it line up with scripture? Do you have the gifts or can you get the skills you need to do what he's calling you to do? And uh, what about the community? What does the community around you say? Is is this really a call from God? Is this really what he's asking you to do? Anyway, I forgot to put my timer on again, so I have no idea how long this has been. Just want to give you a few books uh, that I can recommend. This one, the first one is called Experiencing God by Henry Blackaby. I can't even see if you can see it. Um, you know, honestly, I have not read this one in probably 20 years. And uh, we have a group of people meeting in our house. And we just thought, you know what, let's redo this one again. And um, because he does say some remarkable things. I do remember even 20 years ago, uh, some remarkable challenges to my life. And... Uh, 
a good book to read if you want to learn how to hear from God. Brad Jersak, um, can you hear me? Tuning into the God Who Speaks. That is another book that, uh, you know what, I've heard Brad speak uh, a number of times. I have not, that's why I bought the book, haven't read the book, so I can't tell you actually what's in the book. But hearing him, uh, he's friends with friends of mine. And so I've seen him, him being interviewed and things like that. And I can, I, he's, a, everyone I know who knows him speaks extremely highly of him. So I can recommend this book based on their recommendations to me. Uh, Words of Knowledge by Randy Clark. Randy is, um, how do I explain it? I'm just, whatever. I like Randy Clark because he he moves in the supernatural without leaving what the Bible says about it, right? Like he's he's willing to embrace the supernatural and just say, okay, what is God saying in this moment? As opposed to, uh, let's take video of it. Let's shoot it on our iPhones. Let's treat God, you know. <laughs> he treats God as holy even though he's seen some amazing things. And uh, words of knowledge, it's uh, if you want to learn how to give words of knowledge for healing specifically, that's Randy Clark's forte. This book by Randy Clark is a great one to get. It's a short read, and um, you'll learn a lot in there. Finally, our friend from New Zealand, Rodney Francis, has got this book, Developing a Prophetic Ministry. And he talks in here about... Uh, a lot about character. He talks a lot about how do you hear God? How do you uh, test that it is God? How can you um, know you're hearing from God? Uh, how to use discernment in a meeting and all these different things. There are a lot of resources out there to uh, help you learn how to hear God. The best, the best, the best one is the Bible. <laughs> My best advice for you, if you want to hear God, you should just keep on reading that book until you get someplace where you just have to go over it and over it and over it and over it. Memorize the Bible. Get it into you. Just meditate on it. Not meditation. Christian meditation is not emptying ourselves. It's, it's filling ourselves up. And we fill ourselves up with the word of God. It's not the annihilation of the will. It's the filling of the Holy Spirit. And we meditate on the word of God. So you want to hear God. Spend more time reading the Bible than you do reading these books. But pick up these books and um, or ones, other ones. And go for it. Like, honestly, I get so excited when people ask me how to hear God. Because that means you're, you're, you want to hear God. And, and God wants you to hear him. Like that's part of the relationship. That's a huge part of the relationship. It's not that we need anybody but Jesus to give us access to God because Jesus is God. <laughs> and we don't need a priest to be on a, uh, to, to minister in between us and God. It's, it's us and God. And, and the priest is there to encourage us and strengthen us and, and connect, you know, down here, the, ver the, the horizontal. But the vertical, it's all me and God. And and honestly, when you go and hear a sermon that just is just, wow, that's fantastic, it better be confirmation of what God is telling you in the week because you're spending time with him. You're listening. You spend time listening to him. You spend time in his word. You spend time meditating on his promises. You spend time meditating on who is his nature. And uh, these are all fascinating studies you can do. And I would encourage you to try that. And okay. I'm cutting off because I'm, I'm going to go off on another long rabbit trail. But if that's, uh, keep on sending me your questions. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to do this Rev Trev TV thing for newsletters for a while and, uh, really just invite you to become part of it and part of the Rev Trev community. I'm Trevor Lund, RevTrev.com. Talk to you soon.